Hello everyone, my name is Pixariffs, and welcome back to the Skyblock Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. We're back here on the main island shortly after having been out to the end, and I am collecting a little bit more cobblestone because my supplies for bridging or building with stone stuff have been running a little bit low. And I think today is the day that if we really want to get some mass production done here, if we want to have lots of cobblestone to use for somewhat blast-proof material, among other things we are definitely going to have to up our supplies of cobblestone to increase the cobblestone generation that we have here and frankly to automate it a little bit more because i am tired of sitting here swinging my pickaxe at this we built a cobblestone generator in the minecraft survival guide not too long ago and i think today is the day that we get started on improving our cobblestone output here as well what we are going to do first however is fight the wither and the reason for that is because the wither in this skyblock pack actually drops a bucket of lava and with a couple of extra buckets of lava we could make the cobblestone generator of our dreams we could do away with this and we could also probably start killing the iron golems in our iron farm with a bucket of lava instead of a campfire it might just be a little bit faster and more efficient that way so without further ado i'm going to grab myself eight soul sand because i really want to fight the wither twice here we're going to grab four obsidian and i think i'm going to put a couple of things in a chest just in case anything does go wrong but we're going to head out and make our way to the end and you know what since this diamond sword still only has looting three and sweeping edge on it i might see if i can grab myself yeah one of these smite swords will probably be a good idea in fact you know what we got a sword last time with looting three smite five i think we'll probably end up using that let me uh put the rest of these in a chest again i can probably combine those a little bit later if we want a backup sword but smite five seems like the thing to have right now now naturally while i am quite keen to fight the wither one-on-one -on -one in legit circumstances at some point in this series i think we're going to save that for a little bit later by the way i ended up not turning off these flying machines big mistake i need to do some repairs here because i have broken a couple of them by unloading the chunks of the nether anyway what i'm planning on doing is heading to the end and cheesing the wither under the bedrock portal for our first attempt it seems like the only sensible thing to do given the circumstances we really don't have a great deal of places that we can go and fight the wither legitimately and out here in the end the void all around us might be a little bit too risky so our first couple of withers are going to be taken out from the area underneath the bedrock portal and we can quickly refresh our memory about how to do this the first thing you want to do is dig down underneath the bedrock portal here and there is a layer of bedrock kind of in a plus shape that is five blocks across three at the corners and we're going to dig out the area underneath this two blocks deep of course once you're more confident with this technique there is no need to dig out the entire thing but just for the purposes of this demonstration we have the entire bottom side of the bedrock portal exposed under here and what you want to do is find the central block so we want to go one two three it's this block here underneath that we're going to place one obsidian which is where the tail of the wither is going to go this is very important because the placement of the wither determines whether or not it can escape from underneath the bedrock portal or not we're going to place the rest of the t-shape there we're going to place soul sand on top of that like so the tail of the wither has to be there because when it spawns it actually spawns in that location when you form the wither like this and that's going to mean it is directly underneath this central bedrock pillar that goes down through the portal and make sure it cannot escape through that block of bedrock now with that in place making sure there is one block of air above the wither here we're going to place the three skulls of the wither and it's going to spawn underneath there the obsidian underneath will not be destroyed when the wither explodes which it should do in a second or two and that will be trapped underneath the bedrock portal unable to get out and despite the fact that it's making some incredibly loud noises right now, the wither is not going to be able to attack us at all, and I'm able to dispatch it with just a few swift swings of the sword. Oh. And the challenge is complete. Wow, that is loud. And you'll notice that in addition to the nether star it has dropped, it has also just dropped a bucket of lava. Absolutely perfect. Now, what on earth do I turn down in my <laughs> sounds to make sure it doesn't do that again? How about blocks? It might be block sounds, it might be player sounds, ambient or environment. I'm not sure what explosions count as, but I'm going to turn all of those down before I summon another wither and do the same thing another time. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it doesn't count as hostile mob sounds. I'm fairly certain it is just the block sounds from the explosions or something, but good lord, this thing is noisy as all heck. There we go. That's a little bit quieter, and we can just walk back in here and do a few more swings of the sword 
to take out Wither number two. And yes, this feels like the dishonorable way to do the Wither fight, but then again, I'm all about the buckets of lava in this instance. There we go, we got our second Bucket of Lava and our second Nether Star. We will fight the Wither legit in another part of the series, do not worry. But for now, I think we can close that off and call it good. I'm so happy that we have a couple of extra Buckets of Lava now. That is obviously not a common drop for the Wither, it's something that's been added in this data pack that comes with the Skyblock map. But that means we can now make Cobblestone Generators or use Lava anywhere else we want. So at this point you may be wondering why exactly I need so much cobblestone in the first place. Why bother making another cobblestone generator that's going to automate that amount of cobblestone? Especially considering that I've already built stuff like a house, we've got plenty of material that we can use to make bridges that doesn't require us to grind out cobblestone. Cobblestone, yes, being blast proof is kind of a useful resource, but realistically, now we've fought the dragon and fought the wither, what else is on the horizon for us? Well, the answer to that is the joy of Skyblock being that you can make fairly efficient automated farms out here in the void, especially mob spawners because there is no terrain for mobs to spawn, but we will also need to get hold of a bunch of other resources if I want to do stuff like, for example, trade with the villagers that I have down here and trade with them on a, on a more permanent basis. I would really like to establish a larger villager trading hall with a bunch of different professions available so that we can effectively master the sky block by having a bunch of you know librarians available to us more toolsmiths and armorers and that kind of stuff trading us diamond gear if we want it that's going to be the end goal for this series really that and complete all of the advancements that are in here but i really want to create a bunch of automatic farms on a larger scale than say like the melon farm that we've got here right now which while it is productive is clearly not the most efficient thing in the world and is also kind of a mess i would really like to make some really nice looking automated farms around here and yeah this thing is still producing but it could be a lot better and cobblestone is quite frankly a vital ingredient for automation because it's used to craft so many redstone components things like observers and pistons need cobblestone as part of the recipe and it isn't possible to trade them from villagers wholesale for example and you consider stuff like repeaters need natural stone as part of the recipe the only way to get that here in skyblock is going to be to get it by smelting cobblestone. So in this case, we are actually going to have to produce quite a lot of cobblestone if we want to start making some more automated farms and stuff that can mass produce things for trading, things for building, and various other things. So to that end, a cobblestone generator seems like the next logical step. The generator we're going to build here in Skyblock is going to be much like the one that we built in the survival guide, and for that we will actually need quite a few things like pistons, and note blocks. So I'm going to get together the supplies for those. We've got a bit of redstone dust from trading with clerics. People are probably wondering why I'm not setting up a witch farm. The answer to that being cleric redstone dust trades are actually pretty good. <laughs> they're, they're pretty good. You can get 24 redstone if you've got enough emeralds in one go. Or you can get 48 out of a single day's worth of trading with a cleric. And a witch farm is going to be a little bit more tricky considering the witch hut is... I forget which direction it's even in at this point. I've, it's kind of got to be turned around, but I've been trying to get it imported into this world without corrupting parts of the map. And hopefully we should be able to figure out a witch farm at some point in the future of this series. But for now at least, it's going to be nice getting our redstone dust from clerics. So we're going to need a fair amount of pistons for this. I've crafted 16 to start off with, and that can at least be one pad of the cobblestone generator arm that's going to kind of push the cobblestone outwards in a large chunk and from there I think we will explode it with TNT. Now naturally sand is a difficult resource to come by in Skyblock. It involves farming husks which we cannot do in any great amount from that platform over there like we're getting trickles of sand coming in one at a time but without finding a larger desert biome it isn't really possible to do much more than that so i think what we are going to do despite the controversy of it being a little bit cheaty is set up a tnt duplicator in order to blow up the cobblestone because otherwise i would need to spend all day and night at the husk farm getting myself some sand in fact only the night because it isn't even active during the day and i would need to be able to craft up a lot of tnt with very little sand available 
available to me. So I think it's only going to make sense to make a TNT duplicator and spare ourselves the sheer amount of AFK time that would require. To do that, of course, we need to take another step out into the void because we need to find a tropical ocean so we can get coral fans. This is the major roadblock for TNT duplicators. They require a coral fan in order to get things moving. And here in Skyblock, it is going to be much more difficult to find those. The only other option being potentially waiting for the wandering trader to come by with a coral trade and farming them that way. But that is going to be a little bit more difficult. I think we should be able to find a, a warm ocean biome out there in the void somewhere, but it's going to involve a little bit of walking around with the F3 debug screen on so I can locate the biome in particular and build some kind of ocean area there we could use to farm coral. Outside of that, though, the components of our little farm are going to be relatively simple. We're going to need some note blocks and observers, which should be nice and easy to make. All we need is wood, redstone, a little bit of cobblestone, and some quartz, which we are now farming from the blazes in the nether, so that should be nice and easy to get hold of us. As well let's grab a little bit more wood so we can make some more note blocks and a little bit more cobblestone uh yeah we got the cobblestone there okay fantastic we can make ourselves some observers with that 10 of those should do for the time being and we got 10 note blocks there as well perfect i think i will stash all of these in one of the empty shulker boxes there we go and that can be a set of ingredients that we will need for our cobblestone farm let's grab oh we got one more piston in there as well let's grab the tnt and the slime blocks so we can earmark those for now we'll need the wall that we'll need to put next to the tnt generator i don't know if i crafted one of those already oh we got a mossy cobblestone wall there we go we'll use one of those and I think that's more or less everything aside from the minecart components, which can easily be crafted out of some iron ingots here. And I think we'll need a detector rail, which I always forget how to make. I can't remember what the crafting recipe for those is. I think it involves a stone pressure plate. There we go. I looked up the recipe, a stone pressure plate, which is just two natural stone uh, and redstone dust and six iron ingots gets us six detector rail. We will only need one for that. And then we just need to make a minecart to go on that a little bit later. But I think with all these ingredients standing by, my real quest at this stage is going to be to go out and find that warm ocean or wait for a wandering trader. And I think I'm going to strike out and find the ocean if I can, because the wandering trader is not very reliable as, as far as I'm concerned in this map so far. So let me grab some bridging supplies. I've probably got a few more slabs that I can use in here as well. And let's try and find that warm ocean biome. I'm going to spend a bit of time searching around off camera for it. I'll give you guys the coordinates if I manage to find one. If you're using this map as well, you should be able to use the same coordinates. But for now, I will be right back. So after flying around for a little while with my elytra, which to be honest, I kind of forgot was an option <laughs> until I did a little bit of bridging out past the swamp island and realized I could probably just take off from there. I have been around this map a little bit. As you can see, I stopped as my elytra got below halfway durability and I did find a couple of ocean biomes out there, but they were not warm ocean. And so I realized it's probably going to take me a little while to get an unbreaking book to get the elytra to the state where I feel comfortable using them for longer, but we might just have to wait for the wandering trader to show up after all. In the meantime, though, we can make a few preparations for our cobblestone generator and maybe just use TNT and a dispenser in the meantime while we get that set up and then we can wait for a wandering trader to appear naturally and hopefully get some coral off of him which we will end up being able to use to get some more coral fans and coral plants. Until then, however, I would say it's probably worth making a start on a cobblestone generator, and I think we'll probably build it around here. I think out here between the main island and the swamp island is going to be a sensible place to put it, and I think we'll start around about here. I want to make sure that this is a decent distance away from anything else that it could potentially blow up once we have TNT active here, and I also want to make sure it's far enough away that the explosion noises aren't going to cause me too much anxiety. So I think I'm going to start by building out a large platform out here just so we have a little bit of a workspace and I can feel less concerned about falling off into the void, although remembering that I have a light try, I can always catch myself with some fireworks in an emergency. So for now, I think the approach we will take is to have three different cobblestone generators around the outside eventually. For now, I think we'll just start with one over here, pushing cobblestone in a row that way, ending up getting collected in a water stream around here. So as soon as the stuff explodes, it's going to explode sort of roughly around this point, and that's going to send the, uh, the cobblestone cascading into a water stream that's going to be picked up by a collection mechanism 
over here and I guess I'll probably craft another crafting table out here pop that down there and make an output chest for this which will go in the center roughly there that should work we'll have a water collection area here that we can spread water streams from either side it should meet in the middle there propel all of the cobblestone into this hopper over here we can always back that off to another hopper if it doesn't quite reach but I think we should have a pretty good system set up and then from the back here to start out with we're going to have the cobblestone pushed over here and destroyed by tnt above this obsidian block for now of course i need to remember to light up the areas here which are solid blocks because we don't want mob spawns out here let's see if we can pop a water source in the center there okay everything is flowing towards the center we should just need to have another hopper there and now everything should end up flowing towards that output chest we can probably block off that hopper there to make sure that nothing ends up overflowing i think that's going to be a good start next we want to make sure we've got a row of powered rail at the back here and that's what's going to activate these observers which are going to activate the pad of pistons above them with a row of note blocks on the top there a row of observers detecting those and then a row of note blocks along the top that's going to activate three rows of pistons attached to the front and that's what's going to push the uh, cobblestone in front of this in fact you know what i might make this a three by three instead of a five by five to start off with i learned that lesson in the survival guide one and i have a feeling it's probably going to work out for the better here as well if i can place the pistons the right way around anyway so the idea here is that once a block comes down on top of this redstone torch we're going to take an output signal from that block it's going to activate the powered rail here and if i just demonstrate by pressing a button activating the powered rail will actually update all of those pistons pushing all of the blocks in front of them forwards i'm going to light the top of this up just to make sure nothing spawns up here because note blocks still count as solid blocks we're going to take out these components from the sides here we don't need these powered rails we can actually salvage those components for a little bit later on and once we take a read out from that block there that's the one we're going to be using to power the rest of these rails so with this block on the top here let's take a readout from the side let's bring that down so it powers that block there it should activate all of that powered rail in unison there's probably a slightly more efficient way of doing this in terms of material conservation but not to worry this should be enough for now and that activates both rows of pistons almost in unison the top row fires half a second later if that is probably only a couple of ticks later really that's more than enough time to make sure that the cobblestone doesn't jam up next we have to figure out our cobblestone input line which is going to come over from this side where the cobblestone generator is going to be somewhere over here and then this section here is going to be pushed downwards by these three pistons now of course we need to make sure that these pistons are going to detect when a block is pushed in here so for that we're probably going to have a uh, redstone block somewhere around here with a repeater facing into this block here activating these three pistons so a repeater facing out of that block taking the output sending a signal to these three blocks up here and anytime a cobblestone block comes in here it's going to get pushed downwards like that allowing that to form the circuit further down and hopefully if we place another stone block in there yep the entire pad of pistons activates that's perfect and the last thing we need to do is come out here and set up a cobblestone generator so i guess we're going to put it around here i need to make sure the lava is far enough away that it's not going to set any of the wooden bits of this on fire because we still have fire spread switched on in this world i'm going to place the piston there and the cobblestone is going to be generated in front of that which should be far enough away as far as the lava is concerned i'll need to bridge out a second so i can place blocks a little bit further down but yeah no this should all work according to plan and a fair bit of time later i have now constructed two cobblestone generators and another section of those pads of pistons and i also have the workings of our tnt duplicator up there in the sky ready to deliver some tnt to the machines and i've done my research the problem with my original plan was that i was forgetting that when i bone meal the uh, coral blocks in those warm ocean biomes I'm in a warm ocean biome to begin with and so if you bone meal a coral block you don't actually get the coral fans and coral plants growing off of it you get sea pickles so unfortunately we are going to have to go back to plan a of finding a warm ocean biome now I have been told and I'm not entirely certain it's true because I haven't been able to corroborate this information myself but I have been told that this map has a lukewarm ocean biome and in that lukewarm ocean if you set up an area of water for mobs to spawn in 
you will get tropical fish, and tropical fish, much like some of the other mobs in this, have a data pack applied that means they will drop coral plants. So I'm actually potentially going to have to bridge all the way out to an area which will have some of those fish in it, and from there I should be able to set up a, an ocean kind of area with water in order to make ourselves a tropical fish spawning environment. That's the plan for this point. That's the only way I can think of that I'll be able to get a coral fan for this thing because the Wandering Trader only sells the blocks. So with my lava buckets and my nether stars it's safely in the ender chest until we are ready to come back and turn on the cobblestone generators, I think it is time for us to go fishing. Let's go out, bridge out there and see if we can find it. I did do a bit more flying around, that's why my elytra are in poorer condition than previously and I have been able to locate a warm ocean biome, a lukewarm ocean biome at least, past the vicinity of that savannah island out there. So we're going to make our way out there to start with. We're going to travel a little bit further afield and hopefully with the F3 debug info on we should be able to find ourselves that biome. Well our journey has led us out quite some distance past the savannah island. You can just about see the particles from the campfires weirdly enough that I've got underneath the beehive and down there by the slime spawning platform. We've come all the way out here to this area where, as I put down this water, you can see it's a little bit of a lighter blue colour than the others, indicating that we are in fact in a lukewarm ocean biome. This is at 304 negative 364 Y coordinate. Notwithstanding, we are standing in a lukewarm ocean biome, which starts about a couple of blocks away here. So what I'm doing is diving off this platform, setting up... Oh, there you go! You can already see a few fish spawning in here, and I don't know if those are necessarily the fish we are after, but some tropical fish spawning in this location should hopefully drop some coral for us. I think I see some tropical fish right at the bottom of this little stream of water here, and if we create a decent enough environment for them to live in, we should hopefully be able to trap some tropical fish which we can then attack. Now these cod are actually messing with me a little bit, uh, but yeah, we can hopefully end up creating a little pool in here which we can use to attack the tropical fish that you can see down there at the bottom of the world and collect their drops which should include coral if my suspicions are correct. But considering that all those fish spawned in such a small space we shouldn't need all that much room and I'm gonna bank on the idea that we only really need a 3x3 three three area at the most, primarily because I can actually make a boundary around that with just the one water source that I brought with me, but also because, yeah, I'm a little bit concerned that I will end up falling off of the edge of this if I do anything larger right now. And once I have done that, all of the fish at the bottom should hopefully disappear into the void and we'll be able to spawn some new fish in here, which we may be able to do just with a single water source, but I think it probably makes a little bit more sense to go back and get another water source so that we can make this entire thing out of still water and not flowing water. And like other mob spawns, we do need to make sure we are 23 blocks away or more to make sure that we get some fish spawning in there. And the fish that are in there, yeah, that includes some tropical ones, are now going to be falling into the void. Farewell, fishies. Hopefully we should get a few in our little impromptu fish tank up here. Bringing some glass over would have been a nice idea. It would have been good to make this out of glass and have our own little aquarium. And I'm not completely certain, but I have a feeling that fish would spawn in this ocean biome at more or less any height, because remember when we made the drowned farm in the Minecraft survival guide? We did not have to worry about the height of that to get fish spawning. Salmon were spawning in the sky above the river, so I have a feeling it would be the same with case with this and the tropical fish, but hopefully I should have been fine far enough away for fish to start spawning inside this pool and oh what is that I see over there on the horizon could that be a woodland mansion I think it might be folks I think we may have found the woodland mansion entirely by accident why are we not getting any fish spawning in here though is this not enough of a space I feel like it should be but potentially it is not or maybe I just wasn't far enough away and the rest of the water hadn't dispersed at the time we are also going to have a greater chance of spawning some fish in here the more area of water we have so yeah potentially it could be a good idea to go back and get another water source and fill this entire thing in maybe grab a few more blocks and build it a little bit further down because I think the height that we had there was actually giving the fish more opportunity for having spawnable spaces I reckon I can probably manage to fly back to the central island with my elytra and I don't really feel like flying back out here but I think I might set up a nether portal around this area so that we have a nice easy way to get back and forth if we need to. And if my calculations are correct, these coordinates here should hopefully lead us to somewhere approximating 
the location of the little water tank we just made and I'm hoping that this will be a slightly faster way to travel from those coordinates to the central island and back again in the event that we need a lot of coral for these things because you never know we might need to make more than one TNT duplicator so let's see where this portal takes us I'll probably surround the outside of this a little bit more first might be a good idea and we will probably want to spawn proof the top of this portal in time but yeah let's just quickly surround the outside of this and let's step through the portal and see if my calculations were correct this time <laughs> yep, <laughs> looks like they were. Looks like we made it out here. And of course, I forgot the water bucket, but that's fine because we now have a nether hub link to this place. And oh, let me tell you, that is a much shorter trip in the nether than it is in the overworld. So I think I'll be taking this route permanently from now on. <laughs> also means we have a more permanent link to that woodland mansion, if that is indeed what the structure I see out there is. I'm fairly certain the silhouette is recognizable to me and wow I'm kind of impressed that I missed that when I was flying around here with my elytra earlier but I guess I just didn't let it load in in time hmm fair enough so as I did earlier I'm going to try my best to float down here and elongate the length of this tank so that hopefully we have a little bit more depth in which the fish can spawn it's going to take a moment or two of effort and probably a few slightly tense moments of trying to breathe <laughs> underwater but yep we are definitely seeing a lot of tropical fish spawning down there so really it's just a matter of giving them the space in which they can spawn and making sure we are a good enough distance away because those are spawning a fair distance below me at this point all right i think i'm gonna call it there i think we might have a deep enough tank now i can't really see the bottom from up here or if we don't have a deep enough tank then we can always continue it down a little bit further but that has certainly produced a lot of tropical fish which are now going to fall into the void so hopefully the rest of the tank is deep enough as well and if i get a little further away we should start to see some spawning in the lower reaches of it i think all you need for fish to spawn is a 300 high area of water the only reason they don't spawn in the squid farm that we have over there is because the cells of water we make in that are two blocks high so it's three blocks high any kind of water will do we've got water sources in there now but flowing water is potentially valid as well as you can see from this that's all flowing water so hopefully we should start to see a few fish spawning at the bottom of this which we can now harvest for their drops and we might even get a couple of squid out of this as well by the looks of things yes we have tropical fish which i can hopefully take a swing out with my sword and instantly got a coral fan perfect that is absolutely what we need and i might stick around and try and get a few more coral fans because from what i understand the data pack has been included with this map which allows coral fans to be crafted into coral blocks so that might bypass the need to get the wandering trader at all but at the very least this means we should be able to make the finishing touches to the tnt duplicator i've been building which means our cobblestone generator can finally be put into action okay the time has come we've got our tube coral fan here which i think is the one i'm going to use we're going to take the two lava buckets and add them to the cobblestone generators up here and then we should be able to seal the entire thing off and start it producing some cobblestone. I do still need to build some sort of redstone clock to make sure the TNT duplicator drops its TNT on a regular basis. Probably just going to make the usual etho hopper clock for that, but I will also need to make sure it's not going to destroy any of the wood around here when it falls. Now, the water should protect some of it, I think, from the blast, although the TNT isn't falling into the water, but the water is actually going to shield some of it. And if it doesn't, then we can always replace it with obsidian and that kind of stuff. But hopefully it should also be clear of all of the stuff around it, with the exception, of course, of the cobblestone arms which it's going to be destroying but up here on that slime block is the place we need to pop our tnt and i need to give the tnt duplicator one quick piston push to make sure it is primed that's going to turn into a dead coral fan in just a second there it goes okay and now all we need to do is place the minecart in position here and make sure we pull the lever twice once like so and twice and there we go this should now be a fully primed tnt duplicator let's see if we can get our first tnt to fall down there and we can perfect and that does not seem to have blown up anything other than the torches <laughs> so we might need to make sure we have some other lighting around the outside but that all looks good to me for my next trick we're going to be placing the lava bucket in there that should start to form cobblestone in the middle once we have retracted this piston i have a lever on the underside of the piston so we can activate it from below and i don't have to pillar up or ladder up my uh, cobblestone generators every single time. Now we should just place a lava bucket in 
the opposite side over here as well. Quick jump, there we go. <laughs> a little bit risky there, but now with the lava in place, that should be everything. And I've made sure there aren't any wooden components of this anywhere that could catch fire, because once again, we do have a fire spread turned on in this world. I think we should be good to go. So the only thing that remains to be done is to activate this cobblestone generator and see if it works. Yep, that's working as intended. Everything should start to get pushed down and everything will be pushed inwards towards the central platform. We'll do the same over here like so. Give that a quick activation as well. And now both of these cobblestone generators should be working as planned. And the only thing that remains is to head up there and manually for now activate the TNT duplicator. So naturally for now we are going to be eyeballing this a little bit but once we have an etho hopper clock built up here we should just be able to leave this thing running and collecting cobblestone for me in the background while I go about the rest of my business here in the skyblock world. A couple more pushes from both of these and I think we should be good to let fly our first payload of TNT. Let's see how this goes. Activate the machine. And once ever that stuff gets pushed in a little further, boom, there we go. The cobblestone really needs to fall into this water pool. And right now, I think the water pool is just a little bit too small to receive all of the cobblestone it needs to. Obviously, the one we have in the survival guide is about... 20 times the size of this but for now it looks like this is performing admirably it's doing what it needs to do and it's harvesting the cobblestone for us automatically so all we should need to do is attach a timer to this and we are off to the races folks i think it's been a success it took a little bit of work but we have got there and we are now producing cobblestone in a somewhat automatic way and i hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of the skyblock survival guide my name has been pixel riffs don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care, bye for now.